recording. It should say it in the upper left-hand corner recording or not. Yep, I just got yep. it. Okay, yep. cool. Just All right, so now that we are official, I just want to give a little intro to Amin. This is Amin Nasirpour. We connected another Facebook group that is digital marketing for our entrepreneurs. Um, I found that he was out, that he had created this program called Mastering at, at Facebook Ads and invited him to come into our group to offer it to us and give a little free training. So he comes from the IT world. He's got 20 years of experience across different capacities in IT. He's also an author and his big um, humble brag is that he's one of 283 people who got the VCDX certificate. I have no idea what that is though. So, <laughs> I mean, maybe you could tell us a little about that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's that's one of the that that's one of the, well not one not one of the at the moment is the top um, certificate uh, in IT industry, and I was so passionate about just going up the ladder when I was back in IT and yeah that certificate was launched that a program was launched I think two thousand seven two thousand and eight and I was chasing it as a dream I managed to get mine in two thousand and fifteen, but as of today there are only two hundred eighty three people who managed to get there. Awesome! Wow. So he's an engineer, he's a chief technologist and chief architect. He worked for companies like Hewlett Packard. But then like a lot of us, he got the entrepreneurial bug and he left his corporate job. And so now his passion is to help entrepreneurs and he specializes in business model innovation, business coaching, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And he says that he is obsessed with Facebook ads and mastering them. So. <laughs> That is the knowledge he's bringing to us today. And thank you, Amin. Take it away. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you. It's so cool. I can't, I can't wait to listen to my own speech now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, feel free to use that pitch. <laughs> thank, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, everyone. Um, I was saying to Heidi um, before you join, when I'm going to talk about Facebook ads with people, I tend to say upfront that I'm not going to show you how you can create Facebook ads because you can, you can find lots of different contents at home. Uh, how you can create, uh, looks like Diane has some sound issue. Diane, can you hear us now? Hmm. No. Yes, not since you didn't no. hear that. No, I think Diane, what she needs to do is she needs to enable the sound because she doesn't have the mic. Checking on the sound right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so what I what I always say to people is, um, I try to focus on showing you the things that you cannot find easily on the internet, or the things that people or the gurus don't teach you because uh, some, some of the contents are the contents that people don't know about it and some of it is people um, maybe don't want to share it or they think uh, they're not so important. Um, the reason that I started to work on this program was initially, lear initially I learned Facebook ads for my own business and then um, for my m business coaching and mentoring uh, business, I had clients who were complaining about my ad is not working, um, I'm doing whatever it says, all the steps in the videos, and it looks like um, I'm doing something wrong. And I, and I realized there must be something that we can uh, put a proven method together to go through everything systematically rather than just creating an ad because by default, a lot of people just jump on the Facebook ad console, they create the ad and they spend money. And then down the road after they start to burn the money, they realize, oh, it's not working. Now what we should do about it? rather than putting a lot of problems to the bed up front. Just bear with me and wait a second, I guess at the end has a uh, problem on the left. So, okay. So let me share my desktop. I, I, so before I sharing the desktop and then I decided to put something together that can cover everything that someone needs to master Facebook ads, whether a beginner or whether someone who has experience, because even the people who have experience, it's still like they sometimes find issues 
with their with their ads with their ads performance or with their campaign performance. And I realized that the, the and I decoded the problem because one of one of the one of the superpowers that I have, which I'm really proud of, is I'm really good at pattern recognition. So I spend lots of time going through different successful campaigns and different failure campaigns and realize what is it? What is it? What is it in common between the ones which are working and the ones which are not working? And uh, and I and I and I created a list of patterns. Also, I worked on the ads, visuals, and what, why some of the ads are working very well, some some of them don't work very well. So I'll, I'll share some of them with you here. Um, depends on how much time we have. Um, you're more than welcome to join the training program. If not, um, if you uh, want me to come back, I will be more than happy to come and have another session. But I will try to cover as much as we can today. So let me yeah. share my desktop. How much we get through? Let me know when when you can see the desktop, please. Share the second screen. Can you see the desktop now? The presentation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. All right. Um, so the first thing that I always talk talk about it is the iceberg of Facebook ads. There are multiple different levels of Facebook ad users, which I call them the beginners, the losers, and sometimes I call them gamblers, the generalists, uh, the professionals, and the masters. The difference between them is the depth and the level they go down into Facebook ads. Uh, the beginners are just beginners. It, there's no problem to be a beginner. I was a beginner too. But the problem is when we stay at the loser or gambler stage, because that's the stage that we just go spend money, create ads, and then we, we, we just get frustrated. We don't know why it's not working. I was, I was talking to one of, the, one, of the, one of the people the other day, and, and she told me, oh, I spent more than four or $5,000, and I could generate only 200 leads. When I, um, when I said why you didn't stop the campaign and why you didn't uh, think about finding the problem, she said, um, my mentor just told me to spend more money on that. Uh, Facebook ad is not working like that. I, I, I tell you from now, if a campaign is going to work, if an ad is going to work, you can find that out by spending a couple of, uh, let's say $5 or $10. You can, you can get the outcome. And that, that's how I established a program. I don't want everyone to go out and say, okay, so I created the campaign. Now I need to spend $6,000 to, to figure out whether it's working or not. No, it, it's not working like that. If you know how the system works, if you learn how Facebook algorithm works, then you can easily create a campaign that you can see the results with $5, $10, and then scale the ad down the road. And that's, that's why I always say, say to the people, Learn, learn the algorithm first, learn the system first, and then there are some, 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 some important information you need to know, which I will share with you today. And hopefully that make a change in your view to, um, to the Facebook ads. And then the professionals scratch the surface, they go further down more than the people who are generalists, but the masters, they, they look at the whole system up and down, and, and when you talk to someone who's master, they can look at your ad and say exactly what is wrong with it and why. When, when you ask questions, they, they, they can give you the answer that you can logically understand it and you can, they know, they tell you how the system works, how your ad is not fit into that process and what is causing the problem. While when you go talk to the people who are the losers or cam gamblers, they just, they just try to bring their own excuse and their own reasons, which most of the time don't make sense. Now, let me show you some of these content that you see are from the course content. So, uh, ignored some of the some of the messages. Okay, so I always say to the people, compliance first, advertise later. Um, a lot, if you go on YouTube and search for Facebook account is banned or locked down or disabled, you see tons of videos. People are complaining, screaming that Facebook shut down my ad account. I'm not happy with it. Or how, what can I do and what? how can I enable that one? because they don't follow a specific guideline that Facebook provides. So I always say stay compliant, make sure your account is compliant, make sure your, um, your ad is compliant, and then, then start advertising. Because what happens is there are lots of different ways that Facebook can receive a signal that you are doing something which is breach of their privacy policy or breach of their terms and conditions of the service or a, a breach of privacy policy of their users, and Facebook doesn't like that at all. Facebook doesn't like to lose their users, and the user experience is the first thing they, they are focused on. Um, 
account and ad compliance are really important. I briefly touched base on them. We cover them again in the course in detail. If you wanted to have more detailed session on them, I would definitely talk about it. The first thing that you need to focus on is make sure your account type and your account are compliance. Make sure if you are going to advertise as a solo entrepreneur, as a solo um, individual, you can use your own account. But if you are a business, make sure you create your own business account um, through business.facebook.com and advertise through Business Manager, which, which is Facebook's uh, platform for businesses. Which is exactly the same, but gives you some security features and some extra management features that allows you to centrally manage multiple different accounts at the same time. The other thing that I find very common is people have a business. When they register the business, provide information to the Facebook, their business address is different with the ones that they have there on Facebook pages. So any information which is mis kind of misguiding or misleading like that, that will flag your account. Just make sure you, you don't provide information like that. If there is an address for your account, if there is an address for your business, make sure everything is similar. Um, the other thing that I see um, a lot of people have problem with is, um, is they, they, they frequently use VPN clients and VPN applications while they are using Facebook app, Facebook ads. That, that's another thing that can flag your account, stay away from it. Or if you are going to use, um, you, you need to use um, VPN, um, I, can call, I can show you how you can uh, set up another virtual system in, inside your system and use that one with VPN. Uh, rather than just frequently changing your IP address. Because every time you use a VPN, your IP address is changes and Facebook doesn't like that because Facebook realizes that your account is being used in multiple different uh, locations and it realizes you're using VPN, it will shut down your account. The other thing is uh, your content. Uh, ad, com ad content is so important to Facebook. You need to make sure, the couple of things you need to consider. First of all, do not, do not provide any content that can put a negative impact on users and make sure the tone and the language and the vocabulary you use is, is always positive. So for instance, one of the examples that I use is if you are working on a weight loss program, don't tell to the people, oh, do you think you are fat or you are chubbier? Just focus on how you can pitch your message positively. Do you just tell them things like, it's your time to take control of your life. It's your time to be happy. It's your time to find your happy life and healthy lifestyle. The thing that are positive, Facebook doesn't like any negative impact and negative uh, experience for their users because they may leave the platform. And also on the other hand, if they don't leave, they may sue Facebook because Facebook is allowing you to run those ads and put them in front of the users. So there are a couple of things you need to make sure to stay away from them. Facebook doesn't like them. The before and after in any way, either you use illustrations or you use people's photo, Facebook doesn't like that weight loss don't claim on how much yeah how much weight you can lose in a week or how much um, size you can reduce in in a month or um, any before or after facebook doesn't like it don't don't talk about um, income figures in your ad facebook doesn't like it don't talk about making money from home there are different ways to different ways to cleverly advertise those items but Facebook is very picky on income figures and make money from home at the moment because there has been a lot of scams out there. And in, in regards to the income figure, if this is something related to your own income and you can claim it and you can prove it, that's perfectly fine. So for instance, there is no problem to go out and advertise and say, I can show you how I scaled my business from six figures to seven figures. There's no problems with that. It's perfectly fine. But if you just go and say, I can show you a business idea that can generate seven figures, then that is something that Facebook will pick on. Quick question. I mean, um, sure. I just had this come up with a Facebook ad I wrote for a client and it was for an online like pharmacy technician training program, you know, through accredited kind of university. It was like an online university. And I was trying to say something like, you know, if you get into this job, you can make good money. So there wasn't really a direct claim, but she, the client was worried that even saying that would get rejected. What do you think? Um, it depends on how you are, how you are, um, how you're making that claim and what is, what is proof for it outside? Because there are, so for instance, we know um, there are certain jobs, certain type of jobs that when you, when you, um, when you are in that capacity, when you learn the skills, when you learn the knowledge, when you gain the knowledge, you can make good revenue and they are there proven. But 
just going out and putting something outside without any proof and without any, um, 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 let's say, solid background and solid support, Facebook doesn't like that because someone will see the ad, they become interested, they spend money, they don't get the outcome, and then they go and sue Facebook. That, that's what they don't like. Yeah. Yeah. And if, and if they reject it, they will provide you feedback about why, why this one is not good or why, um, why they didn't approve the, in the ad, and you can modify that. That one is better. What, what is worse or what is bad is if they approve the ad and someone enrolls the program, they don't get the outcome, and then they, what they can do is, is they can go to your ad and then flag your ad as inappropriate. Then Facebook goes and analyzes your ad again, and that, that is going to, st to be a starting of the problems. So, and will they close your account if that happens too many times, or do you just get a warning? No, first time what they do is um, if, if the ad is not approved yet, they tell you the ad, the ad is, is not approved. They will provide you some information about how you can modify your ad. You can update your ad and resubmit it for, for approval. But if the ad is approved and um, it, it's gone, it, your campaign is running and people are complaining about it, then what Facebook does is um, Facebook will check the, the severity of the impact Depending on that, they may just give you a warning and say, like, this ad is inappropriate. You need to shut down that campaign or remove it from your campaign. Or if they realize, no, it, it's, very, it's very severe, they, they will shut down your ad account. Uh, still, there are, there, is, there, there is another way you can create another ad account. You can start advertising. But because you will be advertising same product, same page, same portfolio, same people, same, same, uh, same offer. What, what Facebook starts to, to realize is really just right away they would know who you are. And it have, and then when, as soon as it starts repeating, then they can ban you from advertising. Right. Yeah. And that's one of the things I always say to the people, you spend a lot of time uh, creating an ad account that would bring its relevance value and relevance metric up. It's good to, 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 to stay compliant and make sure you just keep adding value rather than causing problem for yourself. Because um, staying compliant is much easier. I created the document that I will share with everyone. Um, is, staying compliant is much easier than then trying to unlock your account, which you may not have any luck with it. Right. Now, the other things after you, after you make sure, you make sure you are going to publish anything that is compliant with, with Facebook policies and your account is compliant, is starting your advertising. One thing that is really important is, I always say to, to my students and my clients, you need, to, you need to change your view if you want to become a master at Facebook ads. Instead of just thinking about what is the, what is the cost per click or what is the, um, what is the impression for price for 10,000 impressions, I tell them just first focus on learning the patterns and techniques because if you go into any industry and analyze the success, you realize there's no such thing as like. There's patterns and techniques. There are things that can, that there's a reason that someone just knocks down the first business, just grow, growth, and then the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. As soon as they understand the patterns and the techniques, they can apply them everywhere for every business. Facebook is not, is not an exemption of that rule. If you know its patterns and techniques, you can easily create ads that convert, easily launch the campaigns that they scale. Uh, you just need to learn all of those patterns and techniques. Now, I show you one thing that you, you, you will see what, how important it is. Let me show you something. There are two ads. Which one do you think will sell? I have one on the left, one on the right, exactly the same. They are exactly the same. They're advertising same product, same content, same text, color, same font, same font. Which one do you think will, will convert? I think the one on the right. Anybody else in the call? Any idea? Um, that depends on which country. <laughs> no. Interesting. I wonder why you think that. No. Left no. to right, I see the ad is a mirror image of each other. Yes, they're exactly the same thing. The only thing that is different is how they are placed on the canvas. Yes, the so left to right. Um, you know, um, in the uh, Middle East, they, they read right to left. So it might be different because the eye is programmed to go from left to right and ending on the right side. Mm. What do you no. think? Uh, it's no, a tough no. 
no, it's not that. But well, I, I will show you which one. It, it's it's interesting. So Diane, Sherry, you don't want to share your feedback? Uh, Diane said in the chat box she thinks number one. Okay, number one. All right, cool. Okay, yeah. so let, let's see. Um, when I when I say the patterns um, and and the techniques, and I always say to my clients, you need to you need to look at this. In, in, in a very analytical and scientific way sometimes, but it's really interesting and fascinating. When you, when you learn those techniques, when you learn those patterns, you become obsessed with Facebook ads. And, and the more you do them, the more you research, the more you see, you get better and better at them. The human brain has the left side and the right side, and there are lots of, uh, lots of things that we don't want to focus on today. Our focus is on art awareness here on the right side, which is, the, which is responsible for image processing and the left side the written language processing and our eyes interestingly connect a different way our left eye is connected to the right side of the brain which is responsible for art and awareness and right eye is is connected to the left side of the brain that means if we put the image in front of the left eye we will have a better view when compared to when we put um, the, the image in front of the right eye now, there is another reason to it. Human brain processes the visual images 60,000 times faster than the text. So this is why your visual is so, so important. Now, the, the other thing that you need to, con to consider is the takeaway pattern from this is human eye movement is typically left to right and typically top to the bottom. So when you are putting your ad together, you need to consider on putting the images on the left and then the text on the right and the text on the right, it must be the, the big one, the, the most important one on the top and the least important one at the bottom. That is why now when you know this pattern, next time that you see the, the ads, then you realize why they put the image on the left. And when you are going to create your own ad, you, you realize that, okay, now what I need to do is if I'm going to put the photo of myself or a photo of my client, and then I'll put text, how I can position it, how I can place it. So that's, so these are the things that I call patterns and techniques. Now, when, when you learn this one, next time that you are going to, to design your, uh, your Facebook's image, your Facebook's photo, it's easy. You just pick the images that you want and you know what is the best way to place them on the board. While if you don't know that, what you, what you, um, uh, what you need to do is um, you need to try multiple different, multiple different images, multiple different photos, multiple, multiple different colors. And, and at the end of the day, you just go through trial error to see which one works, which one doesn't work. Or for instance, uh, in terms of the color patterns, I'll, I'll show, I'll share something else with you while we're talking about the patterns. Color red right away catches the, the attention. Why? Because that is human brain pays, has a different attention um, priority to different colors. Different colors are coded in our brain. Red gets our attention right away. But sometimes because it's, it's showing aggressiveness, some of the organizations stay away from that. And what they do is they mix it with the other colors that are important. That the most important color after red for human brain is green. So sometimes putting green as a background and putting something red in front of it, like your logo or your product mockup, that can create a better attention. Um, the other thing that I can tell you, for instance, as a pattern, again, in the course, we talk about lots of different things like this one, but because we are here and we are spending time, I want, to, I want you to take away some of these good patterns. The other thing is blue color. Blue is the color of trust. That is why Facebook created the blue color icon. But one thing you need to consider is if your ad has blue uh, as, a, as, a, as a dominant color in it, the ad may get lost in Facebook's menu and Facebook's um, mm -hmm. user, user interface. And if you really want to use blue, use it either in your background or use a, a light blue, something like a, um, like a glowy, uh, glowy blue that is, that is not, um, that's not going to be exactly similar or very um, in the shade of Facebook's blue pattern, right? So, so these are all patterns. When you learn them, you know how you can, oh, creating the Facebook ad is just you jump on a console just a couple of minutes. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's really interesting. And I, when I when I started to decode these ones, and I was like, wow, okay, there are more into it. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that a lot of people don't know is Facebook ad runs as an auction. 
how many of you knew that Facebook ad is running as an auction? Because a lot of people think that I put my ad out and I pay Facebook, go and show my ad to the users and Facebook say, okay, now I'm going to show it to 600 people or 200 people. It doesn't work like that. And I tell you why. So um, Facebook, as I said, is focused on user experience. It, it's so important for Facebook. So Facebook has two options. One option is letting everyone advertise and show all of the ads to the users. And guess what happens? When you see too much ads, you leave the platform. Why you don't go to many of the websites? Because you see more ad than the content. Facebook doesn't want that to happen to the Facebook. So they throttled and limited the number of ads that are showing on each user's feed, depending on two different factors. How responsive you are to ads and also how um, how, how you behave when you are using Facebook app, fa Facebook app. So Facebook then knows that the, there are four slots per day for you. There are six slots per day for you. And then when the advertisers are showing the ads, that they, they, are, uh, they are publishing the ads, Facebook decides which ad must be presented to the users. And, and I will show some of the examples here with you, but I want you to understand that that's an auction. What you need to do is you need to see how you can um, how you can increase your chances of winning the auction because this auction is not working like real estate auction that only the one with the highest bid wins. No, there are other elements involved into it because Facebook wanted to implement a fairness, uh, um, a fair system that includes fairness and um, opportunity for everyone. So the Facebook auction algorithm, it's called the bear, but it's not this bear that you see on the screen. It is this bear. Bid expected action and relevance. So when you, see, when you put a Facebook ad outside, the bid is how much money you are putting on it, and then what is the expected ac action that you want from the users, and then what is the relevance of your ad. Uh, I'll briefly touch base on them. Again, we have a whole section to go over this one in detail in the course. But I want you to learn two things. Expected action is important. Imagine you put an ad outside and you want the people to click on your link or um, watch your video. Let's, let's say for instance, watch your video. Facebook finds people who are most likely going to watch your video. They, they, the people who are most likely can take the action that you expect, the action that you define in your ad. And then comes the relevance. The relevance is that prior to April 2019, there was, there was not a lot of clue about what the relevance means. But Facebook has started to introduce some of the submetrics. Now we can have a better view of relevance and uh, see how we can improve our relevance because the combination of your relevance and your expected action will define how much is, your, is, your, is going to be your cost per click or cost per impression based on your expected uh, um, um, action from the users. Yeah, the so, last time, sorry to interrupt, the last time I had someone run Facebook ads for me, he talked a lot about the relevance score yeah. of the ad, and he was happy mm -hmm. that it, I think it had a seven, mm -hmm. and yeah. it go up to 10. Yeah, relevance score is, is really important. I, I created a tool um, that um, my students can use, and that one is, um, you get your, you go to your, um, you you go to your Facebook panel. You you pick your, um, you pick your um, two different metrics, and come back to the tool, and tool tell you what needs to be modified, what needs to be modified on your ad, and what, why your ad is not operating the way, or what's what's the problem, and relevance is is really really important. Yeah. Well, again, we will, that's something that we discuss a lot, and sometimes the relevance is known as quality. And Facebook looks at multiple different things like. Um, how the content that you're publishing are relevant to the users that you are targeting. It checks um, how frequently your payments are bouncing. So there are a lot, there, there are a lot that Facebook considers and that, that together accumulation, accumulation of those metrics will, 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 uh, will uh, give you your, your relevance score. But for now, I just want to let you, I just want you to know that this, there, is, there, is an, there is a system behind everything that Facebook is offering. And then there's a, there is a reason one of the ads is not working, one of them is, is working. There is a reason someone gets a, a cheaper pay per click, some of, someone gets a more expensive pay per click. Um, all right, this one, it didn't, okay. 
it shouldn't be like that one. The, the, the background of the content should be gray so you can see this one. But anyway, I just, I just uh, gave two examples to, to my students. I say, we have, um, we have a, um, we have a, we have a target audience. Our target audience is named Catherine. Catherine is 27 years old. She lives in New York. She has a dog. She's, she has interest in fashion, beauty, skincare. She plays Candy Crush and Cookie Jam. Now, me and you are affiliate marketers of a company called Moonlight. Moonlight uh, is an imaginary brand. They produce health and beauty products. And um, what they do is they provide all of the ads, creatives, and ad contents to, to their affiliates. So we cannot create anything from our, so, uh, from, from our own creativity, using our own creativity. We just need to use what the brand is providing us. I just made that just to make sure, just to reduce the amount of assumptions for the exam, in the example. Now I'm going to target um, female, female attendees, uh, sorry, female, female audiences who are between 25 and 27, who live in New York, who love fashion, who have dog, interested in skincare, skin is interested in beauty. You may go and target the, you may go and target the audience who are female, age between 25 and 30, live in New York, love fashion, interested in skincare, it's interested in beauty, and uh, they play Candy Crush. So as you can see, me and you are targeting same audience, and the only difference is I'm saying, my audience loves dog and you say she plays candy crush the rest of the uh, the rest of the factors we are using in, for our audience targeting are exactly similar now i don't i don't give you the answer now but i want you to to think that okay now which one do you think dog is more important than candy crush or do you think candy crush is more important than dog again this is really important how the, how the algorithm works. And that's and because of my background in machine learning, artificial intelligence, I got so obsessed with this stuff when it comes to, to Facebook ads. And we will talk about this one um, um, at, towards the end of the presentation. Now, the other thing that I want you to learn is ISPS. How Facebook decides what you should see. Facebook knows more than anything that you can imagine about us. Facebook is collecting <laughs> The last time I think I was reading an article about more than 59,000 data points directly from us and over 400,000 indirectly from us through our interactions with different websites, different applications, our behavior inside and outside of Facebook ads. So everything inside of Facebook goes into an inventory. That's the eye. So everything like a post, the ad, the videos, the lives, anything goes to an inventory. And then from the inventory, Facebook collects the signals, and that signal is interactions with, with, the, with the posts, or interactions with, with the content, how it gets like, and how people are interacting with it. Other people are tagging other people. They are recommending the content to the other people. They are commenting, replying. Those give a signal to the Facebook's algorithm that, look, there must be something important about this content. Then Facebook goes to a prediction system. Through prediction system, from the ads which are getting attention and signal, Facebook creates a list of couple of different um, uh, high potential candidates. So Facebook, so for instance, for this example, imagine that Facebook say, uh, Facebook's algorithm says, okay, I know if I want to put this content in front of Amin, the most um, potential candidates that he may like are this green video, this purple video, and this yellow and blue image. So he, so Facebook algorithm now came to the prediction section. Then after that, it does some scoring between the content based on my behavior inside Facebook ads and, uh, and outside Facebook ads. And then Facebook decide what content is going to be the winner. And that is why I see some of the contents and I don't see some of the contents. My friend may share four different contents. So for instance, one of them is taking a photo with his sport car. The other one is taking a photo just fishing, the other one takes a photo shopping, the other one takes a photo um, just jumping on a plane and Facebook decides to just show me on my timeline when I, when I just see the timeline going up and down, Facebook just shows me the one that the, the, the friend that is fishing. Why? Because Facebook knows that post is the post that has more chance and potential that I interact with it. 
So this is how Facebook selects the content. Everything goes to an inventory. From the inventory, Facebook checks the signals on the contents. Then Facebook predicts which one of the posts are the ones that have highly chance of you as a visitor or as a user to interact with them and then select that post and puts, in, puts that in front of you. This is why when you see an ad, well, sorry, when you, see, when you see a post or when you see a content, a lot of times you interact with it. It is not random. That is scientifically tested, researched, and proven. So Facebook select those contents, handpick them for you. Which um, after um, April 2019, they also made another change, another new change to their algorithm, which they included um, the priority for posts from the from the friends that you are eager to know from them. So now Facebook knows that. So even if we are not on, even if we are not on Facebook app, Facebook knows uh, what is my who is my friend that I like to see their content in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, and and they can predict all of that behavior because they have a lot of data. So ISPs also be aware of that. Be aware of that because it is really important that sometimes one of the strategies that we use is we make interact with the users, create engagement for our content and uh, put some of the contents that we cannot publish as an ad. Like for instance, um, there is a rule you cannot put an image outside for advertising on Facebook uh, as an ad that has more than 20% text on top of the image. But what you can do is you can create a video add the text of the text and feedback from your customers inside that video and then share that video with your network after one or two days then uh, tag your friends to come and re reply to your comment or like it or share it then you can promote the video and then get engagement for that video then start making making that an ad so there are multiple different strategies that you that you can implement in order to make sure your your content gets enough signal that be selected inside the prediction um, shortlisting process and then get get presented to your target audience that's another thing i want you to learn how the isps works now the other thing is uh as as an advertiser inventory prediction and a score are totally out of your control you have no control on how they work or what they do and how you can modify them or how you can influence them, nothing. The only thing that you can motivate, yeah, that you can influence is the signal. So it's really important that when we, we put something out there, we create signal, uh, enough signal. So Facebook, uh, Facebook algorithm can pick that up. How many of you knew about ISPS? Isn't it interesting or scary? <laughs> uh, scary. Yeah, but but as you see, there is a, there's, there's a proven, proven track of why we see something that Facebook is going to analyze all of the content and handpick the ones that we are more likely to interact with then then they show us those contents okay now there are How are you doing? do Sorry? you have like a lot more content to get through I just um, want to yeah, check out your time for you sure um, well, there are a lot to go through but I will quickly close this one there are a couple of things i want to quickly touch base on your facebook ads get to, your facebook content gets active signal and passive signal and the active signals are the comments replies likes shares you can you can make content which are which add value you can create the content that people interact with you can create the content that people like and then that will bring the signal up and then you have the passive signal anything which is not active facebook calls them a passive signal like uh, metrics or at what time you you posted your content those are your passive signals now let me because we are running out of time let me show something else okay now, again we can make this a full hour if you want and go till 12:30 yes and then we can always do another session if you have a lot more. Sure. So what is your time now? It's 12? Screen two. Okay, now let me bring this one up. Okay. Now, the base concept of Facebook ads is how you can create them. You will have a Facebook ad account. And through that Facebook ad account, you, you create ads. 
And Facebook ad account can launch multiple different campaigns at the same time. There is no problem. And then after setting up your campaign, you create your ad sets and then you create your ads. When you set up your campaigns, look at it as your objective. What is it that you want from the ads you're running? What is the expected outcome? Do you want people to like your post? Do you want people to see your brand logo or your brand logo or your product mock-up? Do you want to send people to the website? Do you want to send them to your sales funnel or do you want them to buy something um, from you directly? Um, that, can, that, that, will be your, that, that will be your campaign. Focus on the objective. I, I have a lot to, to discover on objective because that is one of the, one of the uh, elements that causes a lot of Facebook ads to fail. And then when it comes to the ad sets, you decide who is the audience, where you want to place your ad and how much you want to spend on it. And based on those factors, we may decide multiple different ad sets for the same campaign. For instance, uh, I may have um, I may have an online shop, which I have clothes for kids, men, women, and one ad set I can create for um, for showing my new arrivals to people who lives in who live in U.S. and Canada, and create and create another ad set for people who live in Australia, and New Zealand, because at the time it's winter in Canada and U.S. is going to be summer in uh, Australia, and New Zealand. So then they need, they need to see different type of clothes. They need, to, they need to see different ads, for instance. And then comes the ad itself, which you decide uh, what, what ad account you are going, what, uh, what pages through, uh, through what page you want to publish your ad. Uh, what is the format of your ad? You want to use the image ad or video and what is going to be the action that you expect from the users. But what, what I want you to, to take away today because yeah, it's, going to be, it's going to be our first session. What I want you to learn is, all of them will have its own time to be covered, is out of every 10 Facebook ads that are failing, based on my experience and my review with clients and different ads that I've seen in our research, six of them are failing because of wrong audience targeting. People are targeting wrong interest or wrong demographic or the way they are targeting them is, different, is, um, is incorrect. Three of them are failing because of the wrong campaign setup, and one of them is failing because of their um, their ad copy or the image the, the image problem. Now, today I will give you a quick overview of these two because they are really important. When you look at your traffic, your traffic of buyers comes from your cold traffic, your warm traffic, your hot traffic, and your super hot traffic. Now, one of the reasons that um, um, the Facebook ads, some of the Facebook ads are successful, some of them are not, is each traffic type requires its own type of campaign. Now, tell me if you set up, if you, if you, if you had a campaign that you launched or in Facebook and you wanted to right away sell something on Facebook, how many of you had done that? And how many times you had luck with it? I'm trying to say luck. So, if, have you tried to create or launch a campaign to sell something on Facebook? And have you had a like with it? Not yet. I did Not a lot of testing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't had luck on my own stuff. All right. The reason is psychologically, people need to interact with your ad and interact with your content and your funnel between six to seven or eight times until they buy something from you. And I see one of the one of the patterns that I see is a lot of people create a campaign. They just select they just what they do is they go here in the campaign and they say, I want to do conversion or I want mm -hmm. to show them my sales catalog or I want them to I want to send user to my store traffic. I want to send the traffic directly to my store. People will for for some of the for some specific product it may work, but in general, you cannot expect them to buy the product right away, especially um, two scenarios are either what you are selling is low end ticket, like a $10 product or a $7 product or a $19 product. Cost of user, user, user acquisition might be higher than that price for you. That may kill you. The second thing is if your product is going 199, 2000, 4000, there's no way that the people click on your ad right away and say, buy now. Okay, here is $2,000. There's no way. People go through a process. They will get ready. They will prepare to, to pay that amount. So you need to take them take them take that, that that approach how you are going to take them through your sales process and map that to your traffic funnel and then map the traffic funnel to your facebook campaign 
Now, going back to what we have, the cold traffic, you use cold traffic to create awareness and make the user curious to take an action. So again, I go back and forth between these images, but I want you to learn them. So when you are dealing with the cold traffic, the people who don't know you or people are don't know your product or your brand or your offer or something that you are putting out there might be your affiliate product. They don't know there's such thing exists or there is, they can make money, but they, they never knew it. You need to think about brand awareness. You need to think about reach. You need to think about how you can put something in front of them so they can see that they become curious. Uh, and then when they become curious, they can take the first action. And that first action is really, really, really critical. When you are creating an ad, your first action that you are going to sell must be users clicking on your ad, going to your traffic or sales funnel. A lot of times I see entrepreneurs or business owners use the, said, use the, use the action as, oh, I want them to buy it now. I want them to do it now. Look, don't worry about that. Just get them off the Facebook, bring them to your website, because that is how then we can behind the scene collect information about their offline browsing. We can see what other interests they have and we can retarget them. Then we can approach them for the second time. But if you focus on selling them something, they just see the ad, they cost you impression and they don't buy it. You just pay money to to Facebook and you don't get the outcome. But make them aware and then make them curious and their first action is just click on your ad, go into your sales funnel. When you bring them to your sales funnel, when you bring them to your landing page, the most important thing is not just selling them anything. First, what is it that you can give them that prove your site, your sales funnel, your business, you worthy to deal with? Show them something as a value. Hey, thank you for visiting my website. This is the free report, go and, go and review it. Hey, I have this product, this is $5, and people will easily pay that. But the best method is when they took this, the first action, came to your funnel, show them something as a value free of charge, and then upsell them. Say, a, 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 a one-time offer that I have is this report that I gave you is free, and I have another thing which is $7. Those people then become your warm people. You start engaging them. You, you prepare them for the second action. You prepare them for the third action. So what you need to do is, again, uh, we have two modules dedicated, one module dedicated completely to the philosophy and psychological, psychology of traffics and Facebook campaigns and how they marry up with each other. But I just want to give you this attention. So when you, are, when you warm them up, then you can expect them to take another action. Because when you, I, when you categorize them and you separate them, on your, um, um, the, one of the cheat sheets that I provide to students is their, uh, their audience type. Then you know, for the cold ones, I'm going to start with the brand awareness and instead of showing them text ads, I need to show them video ads because they engage more with video ads than the text ad. They don't read my text ad. But when the users come down my traffic funnel, they become hot and super hot. They read my text ad. I can put the text ad in front of them. Again, selecting the wrong, ad type and selecting the wrong campaign, it just costs you money, just costs you time and costs you frustration. You need to, you need to learn that and marry them up together. Then again, this is how you take Facebook to help you make people aware, make them curious, take the action, then bring them down to your become them, make them warm and hot and super hot customers. And then you just, again, focus on Facebook based on what behavior and what characteristics and one, what interest you learn from your warm, hot, and super hot customers to create a, a, a lookalike audiences that you can then say to Facebook, hey, Facebook, now go and find me 1 million users with this profile. And Facebook goes and find them, bring them back to you. Because as long as you can provide information to Facebook, Facebook can find you your target audience. Okay, now, when, when, when and how I show my ads. When I show my ads, I will show it to my super hot customers. Super hot customers are the ones that have no price objections. They know the value that I'm offering and they are always ready to buy from me. Why I show my ad to my super hot customers? Because if there is something that they do not buy it, there is no way that a cold traffic gonna buy it. Don't spend your time, don't spend your money just showing it to the cold traffic. If you, put, if you put your product in front of your super hot customers and they say, no, we don't buy it. No, it's not good. How you can expect the cold traffic to buy it? 
who don't know you. And then if the ad works well, then you put in front of the hot buyers. If they buy it, then you can see, oh, okay, so there must be a tweak that you can put in front of the bar and then in front of the cold customer. And the exception to this pattern is brand awareness. For awareness, you go from the other way. So you just put in front of the, the cold traffic. Now you can target your users based on demographic, based on interest, based on behavior, based on their custom and custom audience. So you can create your own custom audience. You can target them based on age, gender, hobby, thought leader, who, who they follow and what brand they like and what type of behaviors they do. They play golf, they, they, they like a sports car. Now, the way you can use them is really interesting because you can go to the Facebook ad panel and can say, I, am I want to target people who are in affiliate marketing, people who are based in the United States and people who are making more than um, less than $50,000 a year, for instance, and people who are married. You can go all, all the way in. But the problem is the way you select the interests and the way you are mixing and matching them with, with each other is really, really important. It's super critical. Now, as I always say to my client, don't guesstimate and ensure that you do it properly. Don't put, tr put trial and error beside, aside and make sure you can do it properly because Facebook has data, Facebook has metrics, Facebook has, has, can give you value. Use those values to create your audience. If you have time today, I will show you um, a demo of how you can find those audiences. If, if not, I will, I will have another session. Or if you join the course, definitely, I would be more than happy to discuss it further there. Now, let's focus on um, targeting based on demographics. When you are going to target based on demographic, this one is good when you are targeting new audience. It is good for brand and product awareness. It is most suitable for cold customers. So now you see that one. Don't use it for conversion. Don't use it for engagement. Don't use it for opt-in. You don't get the best, you don't get the good outcome with with those type of the, um, targeting. And you can target people based on their age, location, gender, deploy, employment, education, device type, or internet browser type, for instance. And when it comes to location, everyone just goes and put United States. I want to target everyone in Los Angeles. Um, Again, you need, to, you, need, you need to go deep, deep, deep. Don't stay shallow at the level that everyone is working. You need to go down. When you want, them to, even when you want Facebook to target the people who are in the United States or people who are in Los Angeles, what people in Los Angeles? People who live in Los Angeles, people who are traveling uh, in, in Los Angeles, they are they're not living in Los Angeles, but they are traveling in Los Angeles at the moment. Um, people who recently moved to Los Angeles, because they are, they, those are three different people. And those, th those three different people can either cost you money or make you say, you need to think about that. And by default, I can see people just go and say, I want to target people in the United States. And that includes everyone who moved to the United States, everyone who lives in the United States, everyone who is just traveling in the United States. So you need to, you need to be um, very keen and go into detail more and more. When you are targeting people based on their interest, that is, again, it's good for a new audience. It's good for brand and product awareness. It's also good for engagement. It's good for sending traffic to your website or your sales funnel or watching your videos. Don't use them for sale. Don't use them for conversion. Don't use them for lookalike audiences because you don't get sale. There might be some, uh, there must be some exceptions that you get sale, but that's not general rule. That's not in the, in the general patterns. Now, options like their interests, their hobbies, who, who is the people that they follow? What is the brand that they like? And who, are there household, household owners or, or are they, they are house owners or they're renting? What is the, their um, um, income, income per year? So all of them can give you indication of who is going to be your target audience and how you can target them. Now, we don't have time for the scenario today, but I will go quickly through this one. Typical interest targeting. People will target people based on Okay, who they follow, what are the brands they like, and what are the behaviors? And what I see, the people go into, on the Facebook panel and say, I want to focus on, I want to target people who follow uh, Russell Brunson and Tony Robbins and Grant Cardone, and they like Lamborghini and Ferrari and BMW, and they play golf and play and, and do swimming. That's a generic way. That's a generic way. You put everything in there, and the problem is, the other pattern you want to learn, I want you to learn is that when you put all of those interests together, Facebook, um, Facebook goes 
um, and pick the people who have interest in one or more of those um, interests that you selected. So you may get people who are interested in Tony Robbins. Maybe they are interested in Russell Brunson as well, or people who may have interest in golf, but maybe play, maybe swimming or not, maybe interested in Ferrari, for instance. And the way you can do it, that's one way. The other way is you can say, I want people who have interest in Tony Robbins and Ferrari and they play swimming and they, and they, and they play golf. I want them to, to overlap with each other. I want someone who has all those three interests, still those three interests, not one of them. Yeah, all right. Now that I have the Facebook account I'm using for this, can I close it to set up? I answer that quickly. Um, yeah. Now, one way that I say you need to focus on is you need to have a deep understanding of your users. Who are your target audiences? We would deep dive into this one about how you can get precise information about okay, I now know that my audience are female between age 27 and 35, and they are married and they live in the United States and they have interest in this page and that people and um, what is their household uh, income, how you can tailor that audience for yourself. I will show you that one in, in the demo later on or in the course. But here is a good example of audience targeting. I want to target people who must be interested in one of these colors. They, they have interest in orange or red or purple or green. They may have interest in more of them, but at least in one of them. They must be interested in blue. They must be interested in yellow, but I don't want to target those who have all of these, but they are also interested in black. So you must laser focus your customers, laser focus them. Let me tell you something. Imagine you're, you're selling a dog toy, a toy for dog. Scenario one is that you create an ad which is phenomenon. 100% neat, great, perfect. Ad copy, 100% perfect. Visuals, perfect. There's nothing that we can improve about the ad. Second ad is for the same product and uh, visual is average, copy is good, and we can say between the two, with the first one, we give it 10 out of 10. The second one, we give it seven out of 10 or six out of 10. You use the first ad and target people who are interested in dog. And you use the second ad and target people who have dog. Which one, you're gonna, you, which one is going to sell? Of course, the second one. Although it's not a perfect ad, it sells because you are putting it in front of people who have dogs. That one has the highest chance of converting. While if someone is interested in dog, that doesn't mean they're gonna buy it. So you need to go deep down, drill down, drill down, drill down. And that is why a lot of Facebook ads are failing. That, that doesn't mean your, your ad copy is, is bad. That doesn't mean, well, if it's like the copies that I write because I'm not good at writing. <laughs> but if, if your ad is average, but you laser focus your target audience, still you get the result, okay? It's really important. They go all hand in hand. Ad is important, visual is important. But when you put everything in a single panel or not, targeting the right audience is super critical, super critical. I want to quickly show you something else. And that is through your funnel, when you bring the people in, make them uh, curious and they engage with you, as you move down the funnel, the number of people to inside your funnel will decrease. And, I, and one of the things that I see people concerned about, don't worry about that. I will show you how you can collect information from them or about them, which you can then feed Facebook's algorithm and let the Facebook algorithm does the hefty lifting for you rather than you thinking and making assumptions and doing trial error. So we can then bring more traffic to the funnel. But the important thing is as people go down your funnel, numbers in, in decreasing, but the quality of leads and number of sales will increase. Let's focus on that one. Now, for instance, one example might be having a strategy to, to launch a campaign for brand awareness so people will know who I am. They know my product. If you, if you ever uh, watched movie Focus from um, Will Smith, when the guy was picking number, the gambler was picking number 55, 
he said, oh, he didn't pick, he didn't pick 55. We prepared him to pick number 55. So they showed number 55 to the guy every day in, 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 in the elevator, in the hotel's lobby, when he was driving, when he was on the street. And then when he was going to pick the number, guess what? It said, oh, 55. As soon as he saw 55. So people make brand awareness or product awareness. That, so, so people see and know who you are. What's your product? What's the offer? Then you start sending traffic. You start to engage with them. Send them to your website. Send them to your sales funnel. Then they become your your warm your warm buyers, your hot buyers. And then you, you put an ad out and say, go and target the people who bought from me previously and just this pro- put this product in front of them. Right away, they're going to buy it. So you need to you need to implement that psychology. You need to th- you need to take your you take your customers through the whole journey from the time they don't know anything about your product until you sell them something. Uh, this one is the, 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 about the course that I put together. I'm just quickly going through the content. So the, the course that I created, I de- decomposed the entire content into two weeks program. And the reason for that is I want people to get immediate results and become a super professional, become a master at Facebook ad in less than a month, in two weeks time. Why? Because Facebook is changing their algorithm and evolving it every month. If you wanted to create something that is going to finish in three months, by the time you go to the, towards the end of program, what you learn at the beginning is going to be obsolete. But if you can learn everything up to date in two weeks time, that means moving forward, you just need to keep yourself up to date with the changes. So that was the key reason that I created it. And also more importantly, time is critical. I don't want you to spend six months learning something that you can just learn in one day or half a day. But that's the whole concept and vision behind me creating this program. The first week I focus on what I can bring you up to speed on in different targets, in different different areas, in different uh, sections of the content. And then every day you will have your own missions uh, you will have your own assignments. You will have your own tasks, which are tailored for the content. So for instance, I will, for in day two, I teach you everything, everything you need to know about audience targeting. It's focused on that because that's so important. And then you get your actions. Then you get your, um, 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 uh, then, um, then, you, you do your task and then based on the task you get, you, you will receive a mission that based on mission, you go through a step-by-step step guidance on how now you can laser focus your customer. The, the, then at the end of week one, you, you get a mission that you would put everything you learn in week one in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a mission that comprises of two different Facebook ads. You go out, ad, advertise them based on what you've learned. And then you spend two days focusing on what, what the information you collect about metrics and measurements of your ad. Then you come back week two, which is focused on optimization, retargeting, scaling, and then you see how you can improve the performance of your campaign. Now, what we created was this program. It's with a lot of bonuses that we put into this, like, um, how you can observe your customer, how you can observe your market and your competitors, um, different templates that you need, all the cheat sheets, all of the blueprints, everything together. And the program um, is going to go live 1st of June. But at the moment, I have a promotion. So the price of the program is going to be 2497 But between now and 30th of June, you can buy the product for $100. That's completely insane, but I just gave this offer to the people who are going to sign up between now and 1st of July, sorry, 1st of July. And 1st of July is going to be our first run. We start from 1st of July, uh, um, the next two weeks run, if you want to join the program. And 30th of June, the price goes up to 2,497, stays there. And if you were interested to join the program, um, that's the link. You can make a note of it or Heidi can share the link uh, inside the group. You can- yeah, I, just, I dropped it in the chat box, but I'll also post it in the group for anyone who missed this webinar. Yes. But yeah, it's an amazing deal. I'm gonna do it and I'm excited about it because yeah, I have been so confused by Facebook ads. <laughs> yeah, there are too much about them. And, and the way the program yeah. works is, 
every day you will get video course for a specific topic. And then um, later on, I will be live in the group summarizing what is covered every day or the day before. Um, so for those who miss the live session or so uh, we can, they can watch the, the replay. But after summarization, uh, I will answer the questions you may have about the content, about the, the videos that you watched, or some people get stuck into the, in the missions they are going to do or in the tasks they are going to do. They can ask questions, I'll support them. That daily support goes through the entire process. And I will also give you a heads up about what is going to be covered in next day. And hopefully you can have time to, to spend uh, enough time on all of the missions and tasks and finish them on time. And just take benefit for, for, for your own business. Um, I get uh, people who are interested to join the program, but they are attending other programs at the same time. They, 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 they say, it's hard for me. I, I, I have multiple different things happening at the same time. Um, like you, you guys may be attending OFA. I know the OFA has also its own tasks and missions that you need to spend time on. If, if, it's in, if you want to join the program, but you cannot join the J July 1st session, I'm running them every two weeks. You can register in the program, take benefit of the offer, but send me a message and I can put you on the list for the next run that we have. That, that's also an option. Just think about it. And that's I've, a great option. Hey, real quick. I mean, there's a question that a couple people have in the chat yeah. about the program. They want to know if they'll be creating ads for their own businesses and getting direct feedback from you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I can, I, I just cannot give you any feedback about its ad copy because honestly, I suck at coffee. I'm not good. I can do that. I'll give you that. Heidi do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's yeah, why we're absolutely. the dream team right here for Facebook ads. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, one more thing um, you can do is, um, Heidi, you can also share um, the audience um, template that I, shared with you with the group uh, sure. when you are targeting your audience you go through that it's but one of one of the one of the key differentiation factors that i realized and i've found is between people who have successful ads and people who don't have successful ads people who have successful ads spend spend enough time to analyze the audience and create the list of audience which is tailored to what they are offering the more time you spend on your audience, audience targeting and narrow it down to be laser focused, the, 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 the better conversion and the better outcome and more expected action you get. Just, just really, really focus on that part first. And um, the other thing, uh, the other common question that I get is sometimes, as you know, in the Facebook, if you are creating Facebook ads, there's a gauge on the right side, Facebook is showing up, it goes left and right and left and right and the numbers are, are showing sometimes the number are off don't don't worry about the numbers much i just focus on the gauge itself the more it comes the more it leaning toward the right that means you are targeting very shallow audience you are not very specific about what you want and facebook can put your um, um your ad in front of a lot of people who may have slightly interest into what you are offering but not very strong interest the sweetest spot is down is in the middle. So the sweetest spot is in the middle for, for that gauge. Now, before I um, close the session from my side and see if you have any answer, one, pro, one, one mistake prevented at any cost. Do not launch any campaign that gets you page like. Do not do that right now. I'll tell you why, because Facebook is just going to uh, show your ad, uh, show your ad to the people who are going to like the pages. And because down the road, one of the things that you will learn is how you can use the people who like your pages as a template, as a base for creating your own audience, your own custom audience. And then in that mix, you get people who are not interested in what you are offering. There are people who just go around the Facebook and like the pages. Focus on organic. Ad oh, yes. Yes, Heidi. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, there's, I was uh, trying to get some more explanation about what she was asking. So I guess she's asking if the same rules apply to, I'm not sure what she means by organic ad, I guess just a post. Mm. No, for the post, uh, for the post is a bit different. So it depends on your content and what you can do uh, with the content. Um, you can create the content that is um, 
created for a specific people who are who are who are into affiliate marketing contents for people who are interested in health and beauty people who are interested in wealth and finance you can you can do that with uh, with um, um, with uh, with content is, is you will have much better control yeah but one one thing that I see sometimes a lot of people have Facebook pages uh, they see um, they, they, what they do is they don't have any audience they go create um, they go create um, um, an ad just say oh we want to get more like or they buy likes on Fiverr or any other pages don't do that 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 will down the road that will increase your that will in decrease your uh, relevance score because your page your content is not getting enough enough uh, um, enough attention the other thing that you can do is there are automated ways that you can bring attention and engagement on your pages again I will I will teach you all of that in course on how you can uh, create engagement for your core for your page even when you are not when you are not there even when you are sleeping you are still you're creating engagement for your post for your page and then make sure your audience will grow um, I think that is for me for today <laughs> I don't still we have a lot to cover when we go when we, go, we get to the Facebook ads there are a lot to cover uh, sometimes I get super excited about it sorry if I was moving so fast um, but didn't have uh, much time but it was our first session, and if you, you want to have more sessions, I would be more than happy to have the sessions. And again, if you wanted to take benefit of this offer and join the program, just go for it, and I will see you inside the program. Is there any question that I didn't answer? I think um, people would love to know, like, what's your best success story with clients you've worked with before on Facebook ads? So the best success story was um, the client who was a photographer. That was one of the best success stories. It was local business. And the problem was um, she, she was frustrated that um, she couldn't put, she couldn't find customers, although she was spending a lot of money on advertising on Facebook. And she was targeting people who might be interested in photo shoot, the specific camera brands. And then um, when, I, when I analyzed how she's spending money and who she's targeting, we realized that She's targeting very wide audience, and those wide audience, some of them, like, um, if you look at three circles on top of each other, one is very, very small, the other one gets bigger, and the, and the other one, which is the outer one, gets bigger. People who might be, for instance, inter interested in Nikon, because they have a Nikon camera, but not because they, they are interested in photo shoot. People who are interested in uh, Nikon photo shoot, uh, in Nikon camera, they may not be interested in photo shoot for kids, so what we need to what we need, well, what we had done was we went through a complete narrow down of target audience because when I when I look at the console and I look at the metrics I said look you get traffic but this traffic doesn't convert that means something is wrong with your either bringing audience in or what you are offering when I look at the offer I realize oh I'm gonna buy this offer myself so offer was awesome but we were targeting different people and. That was one of the one of the one of the inspirations, and then when I did that one, it was about four years ago. Um, I was like, "Wow, I can help people!" And then I started working on different on different areas. I was like, "Oh, I need to I need to dig in. I need to know more and more and more." So that that was the that was the thing that I always talk about. Um, I may invite that customer in one of our sessions and and ask her to um, to request her to join the session, share her experience. It's better to 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 hear from them rather than just you talking about it. It's, different cool any other um last humble brags you want to make <laughs> <laughs> it's optional i'm just if there's giving you an opportunity yeah, about the google ads joseph yes I, I have experience with google ads as well but 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 the difference is um, um google ads is good for targeting active users um active audience so, so people who we are targeting okay. Act ad, um, Google ads are those who know what they want. But the benefit of Facebook ads is we can target people who don't know what they want or they don't know what is it that they need and we can put that okay. ad in front of them. That, that's a benefit of Facebook ads over Google ads. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, so like I said, we're gonna, Amin's gonna send me this recording. I'll post it in the group for a replay. You could go back through any of this information if you wanna get it again. If you wanna take advantage of the offer, it'll be there. Um, the offer's only available until June 30th. So I would highly recommend jumping on it if you wanna learn about Facebook ads. Yeah, thank you so much for your time, guys. And if you have any question, just let me know.
And if you'd like to have more sessions in the future, I'm more than happy to do. Yeah, and thanks so much for doing this for us, Amin. Really Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you. Likewise. Yeah. Pleasure. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.